Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over um, the calendar, calendars uh, group of APIs um, on the Google Calendar API. And over here, just going back to like our chart, um, we can see that in another video we went over the calendar list entry um, and the calendar list, um, which is saved related to the user. And now we're going to go over the calendar itself. Now. The interesting thing about a calendar itself and the calendar item is it can belong to multiple different users. Um, so each calendar is linked to a calendar list entry on, uh, could be like 10 users, right? If you have a holidays calendar, right? A holidays in the United States, that's literally on every single person's um, calendar list by default, if they're in the US, obviously. Um, so the calendar has very like few fields because a lot of the fields related to like what notifications you want for holidays in the United States, et cetera, are actually saved on the calendar list entry um, rather than the calendar itself. Um, so let's go over some of the, and I went over the calendar list in a different video. So let's go over kind of what we do have here. Um, so we have kind of the ID, summary, description, um, kind, yeah, it's calendar, location, summary, time zone. So very few um, items to go over here. And I'll just go through kind of the API calls one by one pretty quickly. Um, I'll choose a calendar here that we'll work with um, and just choose this one. Maybe just test insert calendar. Let's go to settings and sharing. And let's just copy the calendar ID so we can work with it. Okay, so now we're on the Google Calendar API. Oh boy, all right, very little time to complete this video. Okay, so let's get start with uh, getting a calendar. Um, it's pretty simple, it's a get request and you just put the path of the calendar ID. Uh, very simple, no body, because it's a get request. Um, let's get specific calendar, so Let's, here you can see, I just copied the calendar. You can put this as data or whatever you'd like. And, oh, don't want that. I'll put this here. And let's call this, oh, bad request. Okay, I need a new access token. If you don't know how to get an access token to the Google API, I have a video, um, I think it's called Auth2 for Google APIs within your bubble app. So with a refresh token, make sure you see the video with a refresh token. I will leave that to in the description and hopefully be able to attach it to this video. Um, and so anyways, I back to our topic, I added in a calendar ID here and I did a get request and then I can get the calendar. I get the summary description, not a lot here. Um, conference property is allowed. Um, okay. Cool, that's it, pretty simple call. Uh, just for the authorization, I put it as a shared header, um, so. All right, the next call will be the, let's do the clear, oh, clear. Okay, so let's uh, clear this calendar. Um. Okay, if we want to see all the events, it's on the calendar list. So we can't even see all the events on the calendar. But if we want to clear the calendar, um, uh, we can do that. Um, clears a primary calendar, the primary calendar of an account. Okay. Um, so uh, essentially, it's a very simple. You just add the calendar ID as a path parameter, and that's it. That's all there is to this call. Um, so let's just make sure that there are events here so we can see that it actually works. And let's go to month and let's just add an event here. Perfect. All right. And then let's run to clear this calendar. And run this. Oh, invalid value. Okay. Okay, so this only works for the primary calendar. Um, so only for your main calendar. Um, this was a secondary one. This is your main calendar. It's the default that comes with your account. You can know it's your primary calendar um, just by like going to the bottom to the calendar ID and it'll just be your email. Um, so 
even if you change the name, um, it will always know your primary calendar. And okay, so if you wanna add a primary calendar, you don't need to add an ID, you can just type in primary and it will clear my primary candle there with, from all these events, um, which uh, will be sad, but um, we'll do it anyway for the video. Okay, it is done. Let's look at this. Ah, okay. <laughs> After all the work on creating all those events. Um, okay, where were we? We cleared all events on the primary calendar. Let's go to the next call. Uh, delete calendar. Uh, I won't do that quite yet. Let's do insert calendar and then delete it. Cool. So inserting a calendar, exactly what it did is um, acquired property. Um, is the summary. So I guess you can only add the summary. Okay, the documentation isn't uh, as great here, but you can add more um, parameters um, to this uh, to this request for inserting a new calendar. Uh, you can add all the parameters in the overview that are writable. So anything that's writable, you can add in when inserting a new calendar. And okay, summary, conference properties, sorry, conference properties allowed. Uh, so conference properties allowed, I think it, this basically says like what Google related conferencing solutions can you use. So it's not like you can add Zoom or whatever you want. It's like only one of these three and Hangouts Meet is Google Meet, which is probably what you want, unless you're using Hangouts, um, which I don't know anyone who uses at all. Uh, but if you do, not shitting on you at all, um, but you can add it in here. Um, oh, this video is going downhill. Um, okay, so conference properties, and then you nested in there, you'll have um, allowed solution types, and in there you have a list and in that list, you can put in um, one or three of those options. Cool, and then description and time zone and summary, you know, pretty basic, nothing interesting there. And so let's call this temps Instagram for YouTube, or let's do YouTube in the beginning so we can see it. Oh, okay, cool. a while. Okay, cool. And then we got that back. That worked. And if we go here and we refresh, we can see YouTube test insert calendar is here. And cool. Awesome. That is it. It's a post request for calendars. Next, uh, I'll just go through this quickly to keep it under 10 minutes. Um, then we have patch and update. Again, if you don't know the difference between patch, patch just means any parameters you send will not affect other parameters. If you put update, it will replace all the parameters with everything you send. So if you send, if you don't send a certain parameter, or you send an empty parameter, uh, it will it will delete it and clear it. So um, update replaces the entire entry. Patch just changes the parameters you send. Um, okay, cool. So uh, patch, literally same thing, except you append the calendar ID, you know, that you're editing. Uh, so let's like do it for uh, the calendar we just chose. Let's go to settings, let's get the calendar ID. And then let's go over here. Let's put the calendar ID in here and let's change uh, the summary to be this. This is not what we had before. And so let's change it to updated, updated, test, cool. Let's run that and let's go back to our calendar. And we can see updated test. And the same thing goes for the put method or the update method, except here you put put instead of patch and you can do the same thing um, literally the exact same call except uh, it's just a different method of doing it but both of them update the calendar 
Um, so that's it for uh, the Google Calendar API group. Um, hopefully this was helpful and thanks so much for watching. Again, if you want access to this bubble editor that I went through with every single one of these Google Calendar uh, groups, uh, pretty much go through every single endpoint um, in for Google Calendar. Uh, please, please use the link in the description and you can buy access. Thanks for watching.